Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world today, I hope you're more than okay. So with Bitcoin being as boring as it is, I think let's talk more about trading. And um, what I'm talking about in particular is just wading through this period over here. So I opened up a position somewhere back here and it's just, I went short and I said 61,200 is where the target's going to sit. Now, it's literally just been bobbing along since Friday, obviously going over the weekend where it's low liquidity and such, and getting to this position and now finally moving on. Obviously, when the markets move across, it needs to do so in a upward and downward direction. Otherwise, you're just going to have a flat line. And basically, a flat line isn't a market. If you think of USDT, it's a flat line, for example. Um, and you know, USDT, USD pairing in particular. I mean, that's the last market on earth that you want to trade. So markets naturally need to move up and, and move down is the point I'm trying to make there. So as it zigzags, Yep, the mic is working. Um, then it's got to go up even if you're going short. So on the lower time frames, you're going to see it completing its obligations. And whilst having an open position, this can affect you psychologically, uh, especially when it's going against the direction you said it was going to go against or go towards. And also um, taking forever just to hit a simple target. Going into the topic of trading. Now, a lot of guys have the ambition to let go of their current lives and go full time on trading. When that happens, and I'm speaking from experience, there's so much to consider. All right. So what I'm talking about in particular is, for example, what the market's been like for the last number of days. Um, it's about the external factors, knowing that, for example, right now is actually the end of the month, coincidentally. So the end of the month approaches, uh, there's bill to, bills to be paid. You've got to take your, if you're a full-time trader, you've got to take the money from your trading account um, and convert that into fiat and then use that to pay the bills and so on and so forth. So there's a, a few dynamics that guys need to really consider on how to change their lives to become full-time traders. Now, obviously, I'm not talking about those who are just doing this for fun and um, or fun is a topic I actually want to uh, move towards. But what I mean is like doing this for side hustle money or uh, just for entertainment, I suppose, um, just to put some extra earnings that they've got from elsewhere onto the markets and then make that grow over time um, as a side project rather than a fun project, shall I say. So going into um, the topic of the full-time trader environment, it is, it's, it's very, it's very strenuous um, for full-time full -time traders that especially are out of college and more into their responsible side of life where there's dependence and bills and that sort of thing that you have to obviously get settled you can't just ignore life and during periods of where it's it's ranged then that becomes particularly difficult especially when you need to use the profit of what you've made to pay for things and so what i'm talking about here is that Bitcoin's basically been at the same price, more or less, you know, give or take, um, since well, the 18th of April. Today is the 29th of April, so roughly over a week. And um, almost two weeks, but I mean, you could clear that, uh, but roughly over a week. So what this does to a trader's psychology is realize that the real world needs stuff. You know, you got to buy dog food or formula for the kids, bottles or whatever, whatever it is that you got to go for. And certain things can't wait. Like if you run out of baby formula, like you can't say like, hey, baby, can you wait until like maybe a week or two from now and we can sort you out? No, it's like high pressure, high urgent stuff. Um, and you can't tell the markets, hey, dude, like I need money now my baby needs formula um and obviously this is just areas of my experience everyone's got their own story um so when it comes to consolidation uh for long periods of time it is very strenuous on 
on life, okay? And what this does to a responsible trader who knows what they should be doing is that it introduces biases and um, bad behaviors. So from going um, with the look forward chart onto something that is more conservative um, and it's a lower risk on the capital um, and we obviously utilize the rules to make sure our capital is protected and it's about patience and discipline and you know hanging in there whilst the price moves out of the nodal points exits um, kill zone and then does its move across like all of that stuff i know and we know Right. But when it comes to the outside world infiltrating our consciousness and our day to day and our behaviors, then that becomes less of a priority and life becomes more of a priority, which then introduces bad behaviors. And those bad behaviors obviously start off as a thought and then you entertain the thought and then you see the market still not done anything for a while and you're still walking around realizing that, you know, I've left my job, I've left my security, the market's where it's at. Um, everything that happens here is what will transpire into the real life. And, that, and that, this is just coming from a place of making consistent profit. That's not to introduce um, the reality of taking on losses along the way, uh, which can be caused by the following. So seeing this sort of behavior introduces bad behaviors, uh, which can create losses. And those bad behaviors, which begins as like thoughts, is perhaps I should go down to a lower time frame and just trade more often. So for example, the MTOPS um, strategy works on all time frames, right down to the 30 second chart, uh, two minute charts. You can have the 30 second chart here, the two minute chart there, and set it up like I have here and see what's coming up trade it over there or see what this is about to do next and then be aware of it over there and have that back and forth, right? And let's do high frequency trading like that. Or you can have the two minute charts and the eight minute charts or the eight minute charts and the 32 minute charts and then so on and so forth. Um, however, the more frequent you are opening up trades, the higher the, the risk of losing money um, because there's more opportunity to lose money as much as there is more opportunity to make money. If you get it wrong, then you can take on a loss. And then that loss could um, kick off a spiral of uh, losses because now you're trying to plug in the void that you made back there and then you're oversizing your positions up here and then still nothing's happening. So you add more um, to the trade and then price goes in the wrong direction and then you close early um, where you shouldn't have closed or you bring your stop loss too close because uh, of the bad uh, kind of position sizing setup that you have now employed uh, maybe using leverage uh, or something to like that uh, something to that effect and a margin call is coming up or liquidity uh, thresholds coming up so you close in a loss to kind of make up for the bad behavior back here only to see a price stop and then crawl along and then go in the direction which you thought would be the case in any case um, which was indicated clearly over here but along that mental mess the impatience the lack of discipline the attachment to consequence and uh, you know life on the outside maybe you've got your partner putting pressure on you to say hey listen we can't uh, wait forever we need to there's things that we need to address now and so on that can really mess with the trader's mind, okay? So for those who have, again, I've spoken about this a few times of late, but for those of you who get into the learning um, process with the MTOPS method, that's it's just so exciting. Uh, you got to let go of your um, old ways, so that's why there's a little dip to start. And then the excitement comes in where you start to see that you can forecast the future of price action. It's happening over and over. The learning curve is exciting and so on. And then once you've mastered the strategy, everyone takes as long as they need to. It's um, all to do with the way in which a person learns so maybe it takes a few hours or a few days or depending on your schedule up to a few weeks to learn and practice the process and get results um, and i've hopefully see hopefully whilst you're learning you train on demo accounts and you start seeing the results come through and it's big profit and it looks great and if you, you feel invincible and stuff and then you then you get to the plateau and realize all right maybe it's time to um, get into 
the world of uh, trading with real money. And what happens there is that because you're now managing your um, your new skill that you've learned and how to forecast the future price action for what happens, the it gets a little bit boring and the law of familiarity comes in and it, things begin to dip. Okay, so from an excitement perspective, you're kind of managing and repeating, doing it more of a routine thing um, and your excitement there dips, you've got the results. So now you introduce uh, real world money and that's where consequence comes in. Now, what happens here is that the excitement does certainly come back because you've got live market conditions, you've got open positions, you can take a loss and maybe you've taken a recent loss so that new loss is something that adds to the, um, that loss and the excitement comes back in. But the problem is, is that whilst the, the, the climb of new interest and new excitement because you've got uh, live money on the markets is there, there can be the other factors that introduce themselves as well. And that's everything what you've just been speaking about um, in terms of the excitement of having an open trade, the emotions of what it's like when price goes in the opposite direction, merely because of what its obligations is on the lower time frames and the mess that happens along the way. Uh, some guys have got busy lives. Some guys don't have as busy lives. And um, the, the guys with less busy lives will check the markets maybe a few too many times over the weekend where it's lower liquidity, less volume happening, and so on. Or um, they'll kind of force their will on the market just for the sake of it, to be like, well, you know, maybe I should just open up another position, see how things go, um, add more to the account. So when it does move, then I'm ready. And, he, and, the, and the rules just get dissolved and the focus on objective gets dissolved and then priorities change. Okay, so just to remind you, what we're talking about now is the real world of trading. What guys deal with when they are retail traders who are migrating across to pro traders and maybe they do it independently, they don't want to work for a firm and um, be rejected or you know the long training cycles go through that um, as it would if you were going to like Long Street or I mean on Long Street, Wall Street or something to that effect. Um, if you get the sound, what I'm kind of t tailoring this towards is more like parents in their middle age of life, I suppose, who wants to change the pace of um, what they're currently going through and get more freedom and then work from home, be around the kids more and so on and so forth. So it's, I'm talking about um, that, that class of person right now and the mental strain that the market can create to someone like that. So um, how I can relate to this because that's exactly where I am in my life and each, each consolidation period hurts. Each move against where you know it's going to land up or a taking a kind of slightly altered way, a route of a route of getting there or taking a little bit longer to get there or the temptation of having um, all that pain of waiting and all that discipline happen and then you're adding into the, the trade um, which is going against the correct way in which or how much of your account to put in because you've gone through the hard yards and now you want to kind of add to the top so that everything can move down together in a bigger way and going from maybe 10 to 20 percent of your account if it's a personal account or one to two percent of it's a prop firm account that's uh, other people's money you, you start to like add on top of it and stack it and then see that it's not really going your way and potentially stop and then go back up again uh starts to really mess with the mind because you've ever over leveraged the account you're going against the law of numbers the killer criterion can be a good study for you on that if you want to learn more about it um and and your emotions are starting to like freak out because again, it's now towards the end of the month, um, your landlord or your, or the bank repayments or whatever is coming up um, and you need that profit to kind of get it out of the account to move to fiat and then move into the real world. Um, but the market's just simply not allowing that. Um, and also you're in a negative position because you've done some bad behaviors back here. And um, yeah, it's, it's all kind of high stakes. Um, and maybe what happens is that Elon Musk sends out a tweet or some like random freak wick 
comes into the market uh, where Elon Musk actually, <laughs> his tweets back in 2020 before the whole pandemic stuff happened, literally zeroed me out. I lost everything because he said something along the lines of, uh, we're no longer using Bitcoin at Tesla um, because of environmental impact or something to that effect. And there was this massive sell off and um, I was a little bit tipsy in the afternoon, learned my lesson, obviously, never trade under the influence. Um, it was the night before my birthday, and um, he sent out a tweak, Tesla's no longer taking Bitcoin, and then um, I was DJing along the sunset uh, next to a pool in Panama, it was surface paradise, everyone was in bikinis and cocktails were flowing, it was fantastic, and I had a 36 win streak, um, and I just wanted to make some... The next, I said to myself, the 37th profit, um, that, that whatever comes from that, I'm going to put in towards the bar and festivities. I'll close that trade, obviously move it across and then um, pay with it. And, you know, drinks on me. It's my birthday tomorrow. It's going to be fantastic for all our new friends and so on. So that was the mentality. And um, I, I did that. I, I put too much in. I didn't uh, set the stop loss. I was kind of in a hurry to start DJing because everyone was waiting around the pool and such. The sunset was looking gorgeous and um, the sky was golden and all of that stuff. And um, then Elon's uh, tweet, uh, tweet tweet went out and I was just boom, this major dump. And um, yeah, that's absolutely zeroed me out. So instead of buying drinks and um, spoiling everyone um, at that uh, hotel, the next day, I will literally spend about six hours on my hands and knees, just up at the sky going like, why, why did this happen to me? Um, and so on and so forth. So when I say I've got experience, like I've, I've, I've lost it all, I've made it all back, um, I've been scammed, I know what the pressures are when it comes to supporting your family and supporting your dependents and paying bills and having to try and make um, things work through times of uncertainty. Uh, and so on and so forth. So yeah, so 36 win streak, put it all there on the line. Um, just, you know, like what, that once off um, event and I felt unstoppable and my ego was strong and huge and all that. And then Elon's tweak went out and bam, huge wick down, body of the candle reformed over here. My liquidation point, I think was somewhere like ridiculous. Um, like it was like it came it almost felt like a stop loss hunt it came and just wiped me out and then quickly went back up and then normal price action as it was and i went into my exchange and I, obviously i like short breaths and um the world was spinning and <laughs> i wasn't uh, completely sober so i was even worse um and i was just freaking out and then on my account it just it said sorry liquidation points listen the, the liquidation threshold was hit and um, there I was just looking at absolutely hopeless, just looking at an account with nothing in it um, and just feeling abused by life. I just felt like I was a victim of the universe. Um, a stupid thoughts like uh, for like a moment, like God hates me or <laughs> whatever it was, like this elaborate. I put in all the work, all the obsessive hours. I've tested strategies i've failed with strategies i've sent um various bitcoins to different twitter accounts who said they'll manage it for me and return it and then they deleted the account and blocked me and disappeared with my money like all of that kind of stuff been there gone through the hard yards um time and time again uh sat there through like all hours in the morning just to cre create uh, more opportunity through like China open bells and Mumbai open bells and London open bells or Germany open bells. And, you know, like I've, I've done it, been there, tried it, um, the whole situation to have a 36 win streak thought that I've got this. I've absolutely now a unstoppable pro trader and didn't set my stop loss correctly. Freak work, a freak work came down liquidated my entire account and there I was left with nothing and on my birthday of 2020 had to say oh we just lit literally um planned to and uh conceived our firstborn um a week before that as well so we had a baby on the way just to add <laughs> that into the mix and then I had to explain to my wife hey babe remember when we turned all of our turned all of our tangible assets to go traveling into virtual assets now all of those virtual assets are gone 
Um, that's after selling SUVs and properties and everything from beds to washers to bicycles in the garage to you name it, clothing, all of it donated and sold so we can put everything into Bitcoin and into crypto um, and just take a stand against the old banking system and all that kind of stuff. And um, there it was, zeroed out, absolutely nothing left. Had to crawl out of that. Uh, luckily found prop firms um, who allowed uh, skilled traders like myself to trade their capital. Um, and then my friends asked me about 